Hey yo, it's me, Marcus, here to talk about the video honor that I was, uh, about the stuff that I was supposed to teach on Wednesday, but since we can't do that, um, I'm gonna teach it to you via video. So first I'm gonna talk about storyboards and scripts. Storyboards and scripts are part of what you call pre-production, basically the stuff you do before the film. Uh, I'll start by talking about scripts. Uh, what's a script? It's more or less your film in written form. Writing a script may seem boring, but it helps keep your ideas in one place and know what will happen. Although, scripts do look different than your averagely written story. Uh, at the top left of the page, there's a thing that is supposed to establish the broad setting. Uh, whether it's inside or outside is the first thing. Uh, the general place you're located uh, next to that. And the approximate time it will be next to that. An example would, would be uh, exterior for outside. Exterior field noon uh, that would be an example of that broad setting thing i don't remember what it's called uh anyway uh and then you can have action uh which is another sort of thing which you know shows scenery and action it's just more like a, it's basically just like text just straight across um then there's dialogue which is special as um you need to put the character's name or just the person's if it doesn't really matter and then a colon, and keep that all in the center. And on the next line, you're going to put what the, you want the person to say. But have it roughly between the left fifth and the right fifth. Uh, because uh, it, doing all this will help, uh, will help everything be nice and neat and easy to read. Uh, next are storyboards, which are an easy way to show your vision and a great way to show how it might look. Uh, this is more for people who will be filming with you to give them a better idea of what you want to happen. To me, storyboarding is kind of like drawing a comic. Uh, so you can divide a piece of paper into two to eight pieces, um, and all of those boxes will contain something you want to happen in your film. Uh, you don't have to be good at drawing to do this, you can just do stick figures. Uh, any Another thing about storyboards is how you show motion, uh, which is draw to draw an arrow from the start of the moving object to, to the end of where it'll move. Uh, now I'm going to talk about proper lighting. With proper lighting, the first thing I'll talk about is a three-point lighting technique. Three-point lighting is where you have three lights all pointing in different places. The three lights are the key light, fill light, and backlight. The key light is the main light that will shine directly on the front of the subject. The fill light is the light that will fill the shadows of the subject. It's sort of off to the side and is also not as bright as the key light. Finally, the backlight is the light that shines at the back of the subject which I believe is supposed to help po uh, help the subject sort of pop from the background, kind of differentiate it a little more than it already is. Anyway, so there's also five uh, different angles to shine your light. Uh, the first one is flat lighting, which is uh, a light that shines directly at you at eye level uh, and is used for more lighthearted scenes as it creates a minimal shadows, which in turn makes it less dramatic. Next is paramount lighting, which is just above where flat lighting is positioned. Like, uh, you can't really see that. It's like bearish. Womp womp. Uh, uh, this one is typically used to make a person look more feminine, as it highlights the cheeks and eyes. Very uh, feminine parts. Next, there's loop lighting, which is just to the side of paramount lighting. Uh, and this one's usually done with people with more round uh, faces, as it makes their face appear slimmer. Uh, next one is called Rembrandt lighting, lighting, which is actually named after a painter who always painted the light in this way. And is even more to the side of where loop lighting is. Uh, I don't know, like here? Uh, this one gives off a very cinematic feel and is also characterized by the triangle it creates from the shadows. Finally, there's split lighting, which is used for dramatic scenes. It's positioned directly to the side of the subject at eye level, like yump yump. Uh, sound is also important too. There are a couple things you can do to make the sound better. Uh, putting on a thing called a pop filter uh, will help sounds like p and t not as harsh. Uh, microphones usually come with it when you buy them. There's also a dead cat. Uh, as a reminder, a dead cat is a really fluffy looking thing that protects against the wind sound. It's also important. Um, also, when recording, try not to record in a place that has a lot of background noise. It might mess up the audio. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about a, a couple of smaller stuff. Uh, there's a lot of different framing styles. So yeah, first I'm going to talk about framing. Uh, so there's a lot of different framing styles, so I'll quickly run through ten of them. So you have extreme wide and wide, and those are used for establishing shots. It's like a bunch, it shows the environment around it. Uh, full body and medium long, also called three quarters, are for you to show a person and how they look. It's 
like uh, the full person's body, you know? Then there's a thing called cowboy, which is called that because it shows uh, just below the waist uh, where the cowboy's guns would be. Medium is normally used when people are talking. Uh, medium close up and uh, close up are used to show facial expressions around, it shows about like the face, around the face, uh, and are used to really capture the mood. Extreme close up and macro are, you know, just really up in the person's face to really show the detail of it. In fact, macro is basically just the eyes. That's not disturbing. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about keeping your camera steady. Objects like tripods and gimbals are a great way to keep your camera, you know, not shaking. Uh, maybe you, uh, you can also find a flat surface to put it on if you don't have any of those. Or maybe just somebody with really steady hands. Um, final thing I'm going to talk about uh, is aperture. It, it controls how much light is let in the lens and controls motion blur. Uh, I don't really know how to work that too much, so I'm not going to talk a lot about it uh, for fear of getting something wrong. Uh, anyway, that's all I have to talk about. Um, hopefully we got everything we needed. Uh, too bad we didn't have to do it during Wednesday. I, uh, it's fine, though. Uh, hope you learned something. See ya when I see ya, I guess.